Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Aligning with Success. It's February 27th, 2017. And, um, and I know that uh, I guess we've missed the last two calls. No, it was just one call. Uh, but there was a leadership call in between and some dialogue that I thought that I would pick up on and maybe give some more uh, value to with your help because many of you are launch partners fully engaged in, in the activities uh, necessary to, to make those meetings happen and to uh, have attendance and so forth. So some of you have already had one or two meetings. Some of you have had more. Some of you are about to have some big ones. So the, the, the theme that I thought I would lend to this conversation is urgency. I know Ben touched on that, the need for us to create urgency for people to um, perceive us and perceive this opportunity or possibility of learning about NECAN and what we're involved in with a greater sense of interest, um, making it something that they would put on their front burner rather than the back burner and, and make the effort to attend an event. I mean, you're going through a lot of effort to create an event. Why shouldn't people go through some effort to attend the event? Now, remember, they don't attend an event because you're putting on an event. Um, ordinarily, unless it's something that is a dinner event or, um, you know, some special event like an engagement or something of that sort. Um, I'm going to mute you, Michelle, because I think your sound is coming through. Um, so... The, the question then that I'm posing out to you, and I want to ask all of you who have maybe utilized some techniques to chime in here, is what can we do to create a stronger sense of importance, the value that, and create a higher sense of value in what it is that we're offering people when we're saying we've got something we want to sit down and share with them, um, and which will eventually lead to an invite to our meetings. I, I know many of us still fall in the trap of let me invite them to the meeting. I've got Mike DiMucci coming to town. Let me invite them to the meeting. And there's almost no preamble in, in um, inviting them to the meeting because you have a strong sense of value where that meeting is concerned. You know the value of the meeting. You know what they'll gain from that experience, but they don't know that. And so the assumption that's, um, that's implied or made on our part is that if we could just get them to the event, everything will sort itself out. Well, that's true to a large degree, but it's not creating value for the event itself. And so they still don't get a strong sense of why they would take time out of their busy day, or they might just pacify you by saying they'll be there, and then they don't show up, which makes you feel even worse, because there really wasn't a commitment to being there. So the work, the real work, is not actually the event itself. It's in establishing the value of why the event would be worth taking the time to be at. And so this comes back to this concept of the three conversations. Remember that zigzag that I talk about? The first conversation is creating interest, where creating interest is it's a multiple, a multiple um, point of view perspective. There's, the, there's what you can say based on what you know, to create a perceived value, but then there's what's really in it for them. At the end of the day, that's what drives them to make a difference or make a, a ch behavioral change is if they sense there's something of value in it for them, which stems from their needs, their interests, their desire, essentially their five pillars of health. So I re uh, if you recall, post Salt Lake City, I gave you guys sort of a script that I had advised everyone in Salt Lake City to use um, to create a sense of urgency. That was the entire point of that script, was to be able to say with real intensity and conviction, I just got back from Salt Lake City. It was a very important meeting. There was big decisions made there. I'm part of that, and I'd like you to consider being part of that with me. So what that statement creates is sort of a, a line in the sand. It's saying, before Salt Lake City, you knew me as such and such. Um, but after Salt Lake City, that's, it's all different. It's all it's changed. Now, 
now this is really important. Like this went from maybe a, a, a two out of 10 to a nine out of 10 or 9.9 out of 10 uh, on a scale of urgency importance. That's what's happened as a consequence of, nine, of, of uh, Salt Lake City. So that's what you're saying to them where it reflects on you. That's how you create the idea that there's tremendous urgency for you to meet with them. You're the one who's feeling the urgency. So you're justifying your strong sense of urgency for why it's so important for you to meet up with them and have this dialogue with them. However, again, that's only the first part of it. The second part of it is what's in it for them? Where is the urgency coming from where they're concerned? And so maybe you can take that first statement of, of I need you to be, I want you to be uh, part of this with me. And that says, so with your, so you could add, so with your permission, I'd like to ask you some very direct questions, if I may. Now, if you do that, now you open the door to being able to be very direct with them about things that could help you uncover and them uncover those five pillars or the needs within those five pillars. So I'll give you an example. So I just got back from Salt Lake City. It was a very, very important event. Big decisions were made there. I'm part of that, and I'd like you to consider being part of that with me. Stan, I've known you X number of years. Um, I've known you 50, 20 years, and um, you've always been someone who has been, in my opinion, one of the hardest working people, someone who's very dedicated, very commitment to people. Um, I, I respect that about you so much that you've always put people first. Well, I've come across something that's terribly urgent, very important, and I think can, can help assist you in making a bigger impact on helping people. And I know that's important to you. Um, may I ask you some very direct questions? And so now he's going to say yes or he's going to say no. Chances are pretty good he's going to say yes. And then I'm going to ask some questions related to those five pillars. I'll say there's a few areas that I want to ask you about. Let me start with maybe one of the most obvious, health, since that's been a top priority for you. It's, the, it's your vocation. How important is your health to you? And let me add to that, is it on a scale of 1 to 10 where you want it to be? So I can now zone in, zoom, zoom, zoom in on some of his more pertinent issues. I could then get to money. Eventually, we'll get to money. That's the fifth pillar. And I'll say, you know, I know you've done well for yourself, but I know that's a moving target for many people. Life has its ups and downs, and finances come and go in, in cycles, it seems. Um, if I could ask you right now, if you had it all to do over again, would you do some things different? You might say, yes, I want a yes answer to that. Say, well, me too. And that's why I'm doing things different because I found a way to make it different. So I, I hope some of these concepts are, are, are striking you and saying, wow, yeah, that could, I could see how that could work and create a stronger sense of urgency so that the contact, contact that you have with somebody is more meaningful. It's more direct. It's less about... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? L less about being politically correct, less about being, hey, how's the weather? How's the family? How's the this? How's the that? And it's not really why I'm calling, but I'm just going to keep doing that until we get comfortable with each other again. So no, that's no good. You want to get straight to the point and you want to make it really obvious that it's really important. It's really urgent. And I really would, I think we both would appreciate if I can get straight to the point on this. And so that whole demeanor the, the, the directness, the boldness, that demeanor is something that's, that triggers urgency and a sense of importance that maybe you've not characteristically been that way with this person in the past or, or, or the people or in general, just yourself. So when you, when you shift your own vibration and you begin to uh, be more direct and, and create a, a stronger sense of urgency in that directness, then that's how you're going to be perceived and that's how they're going to respond to you. So I think part of the issue that many of you have been having with respect to getting those people to fully commit 
to being at event, an event or meeting with you or having a really meaningful conversation is perhaps the lack of connectedness to that directness, that boldness, that directness, because maybe you, you haven't quite made that connection to how meaningful this moment in time really is for you in your life and for your Nikan business and for that matter, for the trajectory. And I love this word trajectory because, because everybody's life is on a trajectory. That's one thing we all have in common. We all are on a trajectory. What, we're, what is not necessarily in common is the trajectory we're on. And if we look at the population as a whole, and it it's becomes more and more evident to me every single day with every conversation I have with some of the people who are, are the people who are in my inner circle, is that there is a strong sense of, of uh, need. There's a strong need out there in the world to connect. It's like things are happening around them and they feel disconnected and they feel um, out of control. The situation is out of control and it makes people very vulnerable. Perhaps that's another reason why they are aloof when it comes to coming to an event like yours because you're just another thing trying to take from them uh, some quality of their life. So you've got to really think about it. If you were them and, and you got a phone call from you, how, were, how would you perceive you? Would you, be, would you put this on the front burner? Or would it be on the back burner? Or would it be one of those things where I say yes to you on Tuesday and the event is Thursday and I forget the event is Thursday and then I don't show up. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot. How would you forget if you were invited to a wedding? You wouldn't. You would write it down. You would have the, de the details written down. You would be very, you'd be very, you're very conscientious of it. So you see the, the, the sense of importance, the sense of commitment is what we need to establish. And I think you're doing yourself and them a huge favor when you raise the bar on it. When you say it is important, it is, it is urgent, it is worth every minute of your time because it could profoundly change the trajectory of your life and countless others. That's why it's important because it's not something that is not going to have that impact. It's a moment in time where you get to choose about something that could change the trajectory of your life, even, by the way, if you don't get involved. This is an interesting thing because how many of you have had conversations with people where it was your conversation with them that caused them to become aware of something that they made a priority and caused a shift to happen in their life? And maybe you don't find out about it until some time later. And then they bring it back to you and say, you know, that conversation we had, well, such and such and such and such. It's kind of like the conversation Masuda had with uh, Larry Prophet some years ago. That conversation changed the trajectory of that man's life and, of course, ours in turn as a result some 40 plus years later. So the, 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 what we're going to talk about itself, the fact that we're going to address those five pillars and, and really have an honest conversation with somebody, I think in itself is value. That in itself brings value because it's, it's saying, I want to stop for a second and have you take stock of where you're at, where you're at, and the trajectory you're on. Can we do that? And that is a very meaningful conversation, regardless of where that leads to. So you're bringing value to the situation just by having that conversation. And that should give you a strong sense of urgency and conviction about that as well. So those are the points that I wanted to, to bring up. I, I want to throw it back to you, some of you who have been playing hit and miss, and some of you have had some hits. So if you have had something that's come across and that, that worked very, very effectively for you to create a strong sense of urgency as to why you should meet or why someone should attend one of your events, please share that with us. If something's happened, uh, let's, let's pick on a few good points here. So anyone? I just want to comment, Mike. I think that was very helpful, and I'm glad you went on vacation because you look rested and you sound calm, and that was very, very, very clear and very helpful. Um, 
One of the things that I'm still hearing on the Platinum Alliance call and in other people that are calling me or just in discussions that we have, there's still this, you know, we, we need, we don't have packs anymore. And so we need these retail orders. And so all last year was the retail customer and even with all these incentives, you know, the question on the Platinum Alliance call today, well, where's the new silvers and where's the new seniors? Well, they're not there. They're still not happening. And I sensed that was some of what Ben was saying on Friday also, asking for input. And he's going to be sharing something on tomorrow's call. But there's still that, that sense in discussions of the linear progression of go slow, customer first, I mean, we need customers. We can't build this business without having the retail customers. But can you address that? Because there's still some hesitancy of going slow and, you know, not coming in with this, the way you beautifully just presented what you did. And I, I recorded it, and I'm going to listen to it over and over again and practice it. I think that was very helpful for me. I've had the conviction in sharing what I'm sharing, but not asking the permission in the way that you did. Okay, there's that there, part is very good. Thank you. Um, let, let me just touch on this for a second because there's two there's two types of demographics, I think, maybe more, but at least two that we should be aware of when it comes to uh, having somebody get started and the level of commitment that we're asking for them or from them. Um, in the gig economy, essentially the concept which appeals to a younger generation and we definitely need to be doing that appealing to a younger generation and with the younger generation it's short messages sound bites keep in mind everything they've been raised in is uh, two second images sound bites they don't want to read the whole article they just want to know what what's the article about so it's it's that shortness and short attention span leads to um, a different level of commitment. It's a smaller bite-sized type commitment and it's more about trajectory. It's more about getting started and moving towards something in terms of trajectory. So in line with that is the idea of how we get them started. The idea of focusing in on something, an area that they can get excited about and then making certain that they have a rich experience where that's concerned and then take it from there. Um, so it might be a small purchase or a few items where you're trying to create a maximum impact so that they can say definitively, yes, this stuff is for real. This really works. So there's where the process slows down a bit because ordinarily um, you would sell them a pack because that would be the standard. Here's how we get started. It's like, this is how we do it. This is how it's done. And so you're leveraging the ubiquitous nature of how it gets done so that everybody does it that way. So that's how we do it. If you're going to do it at all, this is how we do it. So we don't have the advantage of that because we don't have those packs at this moment, by the way. Um, there will be something, I'm sure, in April where, where that's concerned for the uh, nutrition type program. But um, going back to starting somebody small and then working their way up, we're adding one step. And that step is to secure their belief system in the products by a personal product experience. And that is very personal because you don't know what they're dealing with and you wanna create maximum impact. So you've got to know, is there an area that, they, that you can focus on or that they've taken an interest in when you've shown them the products that you can say, well, let's start with that. And, and the less, overbearing you are, um, the more you're directing your, if, your effort and your dialogue toward them receiving a benefit, in other words, treating them like a customer essentially at first, is going to actually have a higher impact. And then you get the buy-in, you get the idea that, okay, this does work, this is for real, and then you move them along. Um, with respect to having packs, I don't think you shouldn't have them. In fact, I've always had them. I always had a good, better, best pack. Whenever I launched my Nikan business, long before Nikan had packs, and even when Nikan had packs, I remember when they started, we had a thing called a business pack. That was a $700 pack, but that was just one of the things that I made a recommendation when I made a recommendation people get started. And so um, the, the question is, 
normally what a pack offers is value. There's some type of a value that if you purchase a pack, you get some kind of a discount. You get some kind of a bundled discount. Um, we don't have that going for us at this time. But there's no reason why you can't make a strong recommendation. So if you feel that being able to turn to something and say, here's what we recommend, then you can create a bundled pack. You can make some suggestions. Mine were always just a simple list. This is good, this is better, and this is the best. And so, and I like that terminology. I don't see there's a problem with that. Some people say that creates pushback and whatever. Um, I just think this is a good way to get started. Um, maybe change best to ideal. Um, good, here's a better way, and here's the ideal way. Um, you know, ideally, money is not an issue, and so you can afford to get all these things. So that would be the ideal. Um, eventually, that's, that's going to be the goal anyway. So if you, if you have some things that you'd like to package, um, I think you should do that. You should create a pack of your own. And then if you've done that, let's say by next week this time, and you've created something of a pack or a good, a better, an ideal, then maybe we can share that with this group via email people can make some own, their own adaptations and maybe some modifications and maybe we can streamline it into, here's a, here's a really interesting way of approaching it. For instance, um, how important is the sleep technology to their overall experience? How important is the sleep technology to the viability of our business? I mean, and to the speed at which people are going to progress in the ranks and create those silvers. I mean, if it was up to me, we would definitely be the sleeping giant. I'd make that the primary target. I'd make that the, because I know of all the products that we have in the DCAN product line, the one product that hits all five pillars all at the same time with the biggest result in the shortest period of time is the sleep system. That for me is clearly the highest impact product that we have. Um, so I would want to make an emphasis that sleep is sort of the centerpiece and then we have all the other things that are fully complementary. I had this conversation over the week of trying to explain magnetics. Why magnetics? And at the end of the day, the simplest answer and the correct answer, a correct answer, is that the body's electrical system is paramount to health of any kind, regardless of what you eat. So you may not have the best diet, but if you don't have a good electrical system, even the best diet's not going to help you. So the, the magnetics are all about the body's electrical system. That's why they're so important. They're at the baseline, their foundation of everything. Everything builds from there. So establishing that, and that's our unique position in the marketplace, by the way, uh, reinforces a bunch of stuff. It reinforces our business model. It reinforces our position in terms of what makes Nikon unique from a product standpoint. In terms of health, nobody's talking about that. That, that argument is not being made by anybody. Everybody's into nutrition or weight loss or skin cream because that's the low-hanging fruit for the masses to, to produce consumable uh, consumption. But if we're really in integrity with our message of trajectory and health and well-being, then we have to discuss magnetics and hydration are probably the two most important contributions to our health through the Nikan products. Magnetics and, and, and hydration. And then I would add all those other things because those things are relevant, provided of course you're hydrated, and your in your electrical systems functional, better function. So, um, so you might want to put together some type of a pack that is, you know, talks about that. That you want to hit those. You want to hit this baseline. We want to get your electrical system going. We want to make sure you're fully hydrated, and then we can add some fundamentals when it comes to balancing your alkaline levels or giving you some good nutrition and. And getting some, you know, skincare is fantastic. I love the stuff. I mean, I just consume it like crazy. But I, I wouldn't have been the first person to join Nikan because of that. I love the stuff, but it's an afterthought. It's not a, it's not a first thought. I, you know, so for me, I think 
what makes our message killer strong and unique in the marketplace is, is our magnetic technology. So, um, and, and our, our water technology. So that's where I come from. Barbara, you have a uh, con con comment. I do. When we're talking about packs, and then you got into the sleep system and um, getting everybody started. And this is kind of a can of worms, but um, if people are purchasing their own products, that does not um, go towards any rank advancement. So if we have a new consultant and they want to buy a sleep system, it's all well and good. And I'm not trying to find a way around this. I just wanted to bring it up as a point. Well, let me make a point that was raised by Dennis Williams on an email that I happened to get through today. He said, um, he brought that up in his email. And, and then he said, when, at, when Kurt was asked, the comment, what, when Kurt was asked, well, what if the customer has the same address as the consultant? And Kurt said, just make sure you get a retail receipt. So, is that confusing to anybody? Don't ask me to elaborate. This is being recorded. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be pretty obvious. I know I strongly, str I had this long conversation with Kurt. I strongly believe in the value of somebody being a customer first. Because it's a mindset more than anything. It helps them understand and appreciate why these products have value in the marketplace. How can you sell a business that you, you know, you don't think much about the products. But having said that, you know, one of the wealthier people, Canadian Canucks who are hanging out in Barbados is a guy who sells dog food. Seriously, he's made a fortune in dog food. So does he have to be a customer? <laughs> not, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> so I also understand the point of view that if this is a business opportunity, then yeah, you don't have to be, you know, super, I mean, a botanist talks about that. He says he took him a while for him to really fall in love with the products. And it wasn't until his mother had a great experience about two weeks into it that he really started to appreciate the value of the products, but he saw this as a business opportunity. So again, when we're talking about the, the, the dynamics of different demographics, the value of having somebody be a product user and as a customer is great. But if we're talking about a business opportunity, then now talk about packs in that context. What's the pack that you would recommend somebody or the two or the, you know, the good, the better or the ideal. If this was a business, if you were talking to somebody and you were saying, okay, we're going to set you up in business. So let's be structured about it. You're going to have to have customers. Got any in your house? You know, let's be candid. This is a business decision. So as long as you are meeting the requirements and the requirements are spell it out. So there's a way to get somebody set up in the business and create the, the higher yield for, for impact. Um, and I'm not going to disqualify a person in their home as a customer because they're in their home. I'm sorry. You'll lose that battle with me. So, Mike, yes. I listened to uh, Dave Johnson's call Saturday morning. And he addressed this very same situation. And he recommended to somebody that um, if somebody was considering becoming a consultant, but they wanted to become more familiar with the products first, um, he recommended that they purchase a sleep system and um, themselves um, and try it for a week or whoever, whatever time limit you put on it. And if they weren't satisfied with it, he would buy it back. In the meantime, the volume has counted. Um, I can't remember the exact details, but it's his Saturday morning call that he did. And I would recommend people listen to it because I need to listen to it again to get the exact uh, way in which he explained it. But it made sense the way he explained it. My memory just isn't retaining the, the exact details. Well, some, it, for the vol volume to count, somebody has to be on the books as a consultant and somebody has to be on the books as a customer. So solve that problem, guys. It's that simple. Well, it's he should sell it to a friend. Hello. Yeah. You're the consultant, sell it to a friend, and if the friend doesn't like it, 
you'll buy it back. But when you sell it to the customer, you're getting the volume. Yeah. So that's a roundabout way of saying the same thing. Establish a customer regardless of who they are and where they live. And you sign up as a consultant and you kill two birds with one stone. So um, just as long as you have a retail receipt where that product ended up. So that's, that's fine. So I, I, again, but coming back to the idea of if I'm talking to a business prospect, what is a good way for them to get started? So once again, we have to look at the demographics. I think if they're, so, if they're over 40 or maybe over 35, 1,500 points, get that senior position or the executive position locked in and, and have the volume generated for that is probably a, a, a smart move and a simple one for them to make. Maybe if they're still um, dealing, struggling financially, it, it might be a $500 benchmark. So I set benchmarks as my minimums. Minimum 500, minimum 1500, or it could be 500,000, 1500. You set your own benchmarks, but then it could be really a combination of stuff that hits those targets. Uh, when I had two seniors come in in, in um, December, I just said, here's the benchmark. And so why don't you go online, take a look at stuff, and as you're placing that order as a customer, I'll calculate what the point volume is, of that is. And then so I had my, my computer up and placing the order as a mock order so I could see what the volume would be as they started going shopping. They went shopping as a customer in a customer profile under their distributorship. So they had a distributor, their own distributorship, they established a customer, and then they went shopping with that customer. And as they were selecting items that made sense to them, of course I was making my own recommendations, I would add those items to my, my, um, my shopping cart um, by item number, and then you can click recalculate and you can see the volume value. So we just kept shopping until they hit at least 1,500 points. And that way we knew they were making the, the, the minimum that it would take for them to, uh, to generate the volume for a seniorship. So, or executive ship, that is. Well, it was senior then, but now executive. So that's just business, guys. That's smart business. It's a prudent way of doing it. So that's how I would make my uh, recommendation. Um, Again, let's go back, though, to the original question here in the few minutes we have left. Urgency. Some of you have been successful at getting people into a one-on-one -on -one or to a meeting or to a call, and you've established the value of being on that, the time to be on that, to make it a priority where it was written down and they were there. Anybody here have some things that you've, you've said, you know, I've, I think I've found a formula that works. I, I think I've found something that seems to be effective. Mike? Yes, it's, Randy. It's Randy. Uh, yeah, I, I, this woman blew me away. I got an email back from her. I just met her the other night. She has her own painting business. And she says, I'd like to speak with you about what you do. You clearly have a passion and specific goals. And uh, I had... I just thought, I'll just be gutsy and put it in an email. The email she was responding to was, um, I'm thinking that I'd like to meet with you because your painters are probably having discomfort. And my goal this quarter is to reach out to at least 80 new people with Niken's life-changing wellness technologies. So if you can refer me to someone you know who might be interested in learning more, I'd be most grateful. And then I said, I'd like you to come to an event on May, March 19th. My intention is to fill the room to overflow with quality people like yourself to welcome my very special guest, Mike, coming in from Toronto. And he'll share his broad entrepreneurial vision, which applies to all quality businesses like yours. Wow. And then I got this great email back. I'm like, wow, that was cool. So we have a, we, and, and so she said, well, I'm really busy, but I can talk to you at nine o'clock on Tuesday. And I'm like, yeah, uh, that's, that's good. We'll do that. That's Randy, excellent. Can you share that letter on um, launch uh, partners? Send it to, yeah, launch partners so that we could all utilize your, 
your idea and format that's oh. terrific. <laughs> okay i've only used it two or three times but uh this one worked um well, well it's the it's the point that you're making it's the fact yeah. that that you have a directness you're, you're you mentioned intention and goal i mean you're, mm -hmm. you're telling them you have an intention you have a goal so and that's what she's responding to your directness yeah, that was neat and she's an entrepreneur and so she recognizes that there so. you go there you go. You know, we want to attract the people that we want to attract. Right. And so it, when you're, when you're putting bait on the hook, on the on a fish hook, you're putting, you're baiting that hook with a particular type of bait, depending on the fish you're trying to attract. Yeah. So it, when you, when you, the, the metaphor for this is you're looking to attract people who are direct, um, honest, because if they're, if they're not going to show up, why would they tell you they're going to come and then they don't come? You don't want that. You don't want people who are that way for, as a habit. You want people who have at least enough confidence or directness that they can say to you, look, this week's not a good week. Um, so I, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to come and then I can't come. Is there another time we can meet? I'd rather have somebody say that to me than pacify me with, sure, I'll be there and then they don't show up and they don't even call to tell you they're not coming. That's just rude. So when you yourself become more direct and deliberate, then you're forcing them to meet you there. That's the platform, the stage you're setting for that kind of a conversation. You're inviting the honesty. You're inviting the directness. And I think it's because we live in a world that's gone so politically correct that people are afraid to be direct. And so they would rather say something and not mean it than, than tell you what they really mean. That's just such a waste of energy and life force. Who's got time for that, really? So we set the, we be the, the, the um, standard bearers of that. That's how we create that urgency, that deliberateness, that focus, that intention. When we make those statements out loud, people see we're deliberate, we're on purpose. We're focused. We want to be direct with them. We'd like them to be direct with us. And then you got a real conversation going. Any other? Thanks for that, Randy. That was excellent. Anyone else? I'll use it more often. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I, I think unless there's one more because I, I'm showing 941 and I want to get this recording recorded before my call starts. So, um, Good. I think this is productive. This is a useful, useful call. And again, I would translate this call into some level of action. Take what you're learning right now or what you're hearing right now and write something down that you're going to apply. What are you going to do this week that you haven't been doing? Be, be action oriented so you can apply this. Then next week, bring us your feedback. How has this exercise made an impact in your performance in terms of contact and invite. Is there time for a question? Or you yeah, know? sure. Okay. Um, I am just getting into the videos and I think they're really great because I had, I overcame technological challenges and I got on. And, and so, the videos you're refer referencing, the, Carol, the oh, ones that... The big, the ones we're supposed to listen launch to. Launch partners, the launch partners videos on the launch partners connection YouTube or Facebook page. That's the very first link. The t the one that's pinned in the comment section are all the history of our videos. Go ahead. I think they're excellent, and it really they really energize me. And one thing that I've been struggling with was, you know, it seemed to me like the the one on ones or the coffee shop meetings or or you know our contacts that we are doing in order to invite people to come to the event, the world tour, would not be the same thing as the world tour, and and I you know that you would you would focus on kind of where people are and responding to that and inviting them so that they're engaged based on your my response to their individual need and from that comes a relationship to, um to invite them to come to the world tour would you agree yeah i do because 
I mean, you can mention the fact that that world tour is coming, but I always say this is an important event. Um, we've got between now and then to get you up to speed on what this is all about. See, you're using the event oh, as the book stop. You're saying this event is the book stop. Like, here's where you get to decide if you're going to invest in the stock market. So we got between now and then to figure out whether or not you even want to be in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And whether this particular company or this stock matters to you. So the event is the book is the backstop, not, not the book stop, but the backstop. So it's like, this is what's coming. It's on this date. And if you like what you've seen between now and then you're going to want to be there. Chances are you're going to want to be there with somebody. So let's get this ball rolling as quickly as possible to get you up to speed on what would make your decision to be there obvious. See how that works? Yeah, and it's not, I, what I see myself presenting is not the same thing as, I mean, there's obviously products and things, they will be some of it, but it, it's like a, it isn't like the whole enchilada, you know. Of, well, it depends on what your intention is, where that particular contact is. Again, my favorite audio, and I'm biased, is contact and invite. It's on my YouTube channel. So if you look for Good Vibes 40, 40, G-O-O-D-V-I-B-E-S 40 as a YouTube channel on YouTube, you'll see my stuff. And the one that's called Contact and Invites actually an audio. I really like that audio. I still think that that tells, that sets up the proper context and intention for that contact and invite call to be meaningful and effective. It gives you a formula as well. So your intention dictates what you're going to cover in the conversation because that's why you're having the conversation. It's to, to create an, an impact. Uh, what's the intention? So the intention is to present the past, find the quarter inch drill bit hole that they want to drill and then show them that you've got a, a, a drill bit available to, to investigate. So yes. you got to find the hole that they want to drill. Yes. And then, then suggest that you've got the drill bit. And that, that's going to be a process of information. But essentially, if you can't establish the hole, the fact that they want to drill a hole, then showing them 10 different drill bits doesn't matter. Not any one of them matters. It's just noise. It's just a waste of time. It's, so, it's noise. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why this deliberateness, this directness, and this ability to get to that conversation of the five pillars is so critical because there's the hole. There's where the real meaning comes. And then the fact that you've got an event coming up or a guest speaker or something, that's the backstop. That's We've got between now and then to get you up to speed so that that particular event and meeting this particular person has meaning and value to you. So let's get this ball started tonight. What do you say? Because I was, I was thinking yeah. too, like if you discern if they're, if they're really, they're going to be buyers or if you discern that they're going to be part of a team, you know, to, to be an entrepreneur, then how you would invite them to the event would be like... Um, well, how you would invite them into the entire conversation would be different. Like, I have a very specific approach for somebody I'm looking to invite to partner with me. That's that contact and invite. So I would know that before I made the call. I'm inviting you to partner with me. I'm not inviting you to find out whether or not I want to partner with you or sell you a product. It's, it's not how it works. That's prospecting. Prospecting is trying to figure out whether you're talking to a, a, a product, potential product person or a potential partner. Once you've established that, how you invite them to engage them in the process is very particular. So your first call that you're suggesting is an exploration call, call that's prospecting. I'm talking about once I know if this is a person that I want to engage in, as a potential business prospect, once that's established, they go on my contact list and then that call is very deliberate. Are you saying that you would only invite people that are wanting to be partners to the world tour? That's the focus of the world tour. 
So oh. would I only invite them? I would invite people who I think could potentially be a partner. Um, I wouldn't be inviting customers to a World Tour event who, that I knew were just customers unless I thought that they were entrepreneurial and that maybe there is something there. But nor, and, and it also depends on how you've structured your event. Some of the events I'm doing have two components to them. One of the components is the product component, very deliberately done that way. And then the business component with a break in between so that we can weed out those who don't want to hear the business message. But if you are a business prospect, you'd want to hear both of the messages. We have to. Okay. So yeah, there is a goal for like, I personally am not flying around the country to track customers in an ECAN. I don't need to be doing that. I'm looking for business partners and I'm trying to help you find them. I've got to end this call guys. I've got another one in 10 minutes and I've got to fit, get this recording recorded onto my laptop before I can get that call going. Michelle, did, really quick. Very quick. I, I'd like to share a success story. Ron Morton is on here with us tonight, a brand new consultant. And through discovering what his need was, addressing his need, within a matter of a few short weeks, he signed up as a consultant, realizing that he could help others in need as well. So I, I truly believe that finding out what they need, make it about them, is truly the, the key to success. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. And welcome, Morton. Um, and then, Carol, just to, to back that point up, if, if it's, it's becoming obvious that this particular product user is seeing the value of this and that business conversation started, then by all means, they should come and kick the tires of the business to see what that's about so that they, they may want to turn the engine on uh, of this as a business. But the tour, the world tour, has a focus. Active wellness is the message. But it is about the gig economy. It is about, so there's a business emphasis in the world tour. That's, that's by, by design. So we are looking to expand the network through the world tour of business partners. That's why we added that business component in the, in the presentation. Not just looking for customers, but in fact looking for business partners and giving customers an opportunity also to, to, to assess it from that point of view. And with that, guys, I've got to call this meeting an end. Thank you for, for being on. Thanks for your contributions. And uh, watch for the playback if you want to share this with your team. And you. please take some action with respect to what you heard. Bring us back some feedback for next week's call. Yeah? Yep. Happy Alrighty. birthday for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Nice. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.